Do you ever wear a pair of sweatpants? Do you own a pair of sweatpants? Yeah, but they have rhinestones on them and I wear high heels with them. They do and you do? <laughs> oh, actually, of course, we all have our comfort zone. You know, it's like I don't wear sweatpants so much as I, but I have my little comfy clothes, my little pajamas and, you know. A special stuff. drawer of cozy yeah, just, clothes. Yeah, just soft junk clothes. Soft junk clothes, yeah. that's exactly yeah, it. Cause, it. Yeah, of course nobody stays. You know, I try, you know, for my husband when I'm around the house, I try to put on a little makeup and, you know, on the days I'm not even working, I'll pull my hair up in a scrunchie or, or whatever, but I like to kind of, you know, I feel better when I have on a little makeup. I never know who's gonna come to my door and I'm not about to go looking like somebody's mugshot. What if Elvis came to your door? Because I, I think- Well, if Elvis came to my door, I'd be looking for Jesus right behind him. I mean, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Today, if Elvis came to your door, that would be weird. But back in the day, is it true that Colonel Tom Parker came to you about, I will always love you? Oh, yeah. And you had to, again, this is where I think you know yourself so well, where you give yourself permission, where you know your boundaries of what can and can't work for you. And I think that takes a lot of people a lifetime to learn and sometimes still struggle with it. Why did you decide to not allow them to use the song? Was it because of the ownership rights? Yes, uh, well, I'd already had a number one song on it. Uh, that song came out in 1972, I think, that it came out, I know that album. And uh, Jolene and I Will Always Love You were on the same album. But anyway, I had a number one song on I Will Always Love You. And so I had started my publishing company and that was the my biggest copyright at that time. And because it had been number one. And so I was starting that for my my family, you know, for whatever I would leave behind. So when they said I was going to go down to record the song or go into the session, uh, when Elvis was going to record it and the next morning and Colonel Tom called me that afternoon and said you know we don't record anything with Elvis unless we have the publishing. I said well you can't have the publishing on that one. He said well we have to have at least half. I said you can't have half either. I said he said well then we can't record it and I was heartbroken because it wasn't Elvis. Uh, it was Colonel Tom. You know, he made a lot of decisions that Elvis didn't even you know, know, about. know about, probably. But anyhow, so I didn't let him have it. And then several years later, of course, Whitney did it. And I was so glad to keep the publishing because I made a lot of money off of that. And you deserved everything. And I didn't want Colonel Tom to have had that money. I do. Him and his family. I, I agree. <laughs> but that went well. And But uh, speaking of, uh, right after that, I thought, I've got to hear Elvis sing and I will always love you. So I wrote a song called I Dream about Elvis and Elvis came to me in a dream and it tells that whole story by him saying well you know I wanted to sing a song the one about true love that I will always love you song but the colonel screwed that up <laughs> anyway so the whole song is gone and so I said well you know this is my dream could you sing it with me now and so we recorded it. and that's one of my favorite songs on my rock star album yeah so anyway I, Ronnie moment. McDowell a guy that sounds just like Elvis you know, did the the voice and the talking, and we had a conversation. So everything kind of makes this little circle. Whitney had I Will Always Love You, made it worldwide. I mean, I But I so made much. that decision as a businesswoman. I was thinking, you know, I'm starting out my life, and it is the music business. So I was exercising the business end of, you know, of the music. <laughs>